Hello, everybody. You guys doing all right in here? All right, you guys are free to roam. So the coyotes around here have just gone crazy here lately. I don't know if the population's up or what, but our neighbors ended up seeing a big coyote just right over here in our driveway, 9.30 in the morning, like two days ago. And of course that's only, you know, 80 feet from where the animals are right here. And they would have been out here in the pasture at that point in time. So I decided to completely lock them in the barn last night. A lot of times they go in the barn, it's still slightly open, but we actually locked them in there last night. And that may be something that we'll do for a little while just in case. So they're just finishing off that last round bale. Uh, we emptied out the feeder and we dumped what was left right here on the ground. So later today, I'll probably spread all this out for more bedding in here and then bring another round bale in because I'm leaving to go to the uh, the tractor show tomorrow morning down in Louisville, Kentucky, the National Farm Machinery Show. And Rebecca will be taking care of all of this on her own for the next couple days. So I just wanna make sure that we've got everything in place so there's not much for her to do. So a big round bale in there, she won't have to worry about feeding any hay. And um, we probably got a few other things to do just to try to make it easier on Rebecca while I'm gone. So last night the neighbors brought their rooster by. He had been picking on their hens so bad that um, they asked us to watch him for a little while. Um, and we'll see how it works out. But I think our hens have actually been picking on him and gave him a little bit of taste of his own medicine. And he is freaking out. And you can see him here. He's a pretty rooster, but he is freaking out in a new place today with all these girls that are picking on him. <laughs> and uh, so he doesn't know what to think. So you're probably gonna end up hearing a rooster in the background. And I'm not sure how long we're gonna end up keeping him. Uh, they may take him back here once their hens heal up or we may end up keeping him for a while longer. We'll just wait and see. And we've had several roosters through the years and Every one of them seems like after they get a year old or so, they all eventually end up turning kind of mean and picking on um, at least maybe one or two of the hens really bad where they almost even kill them. I mean, they get pretty, they can get pretty mean. So we haven't had a rooster for a while just because of that reason. And they can get where they um, also um, come at you and attack you and our neighbors, their kids and everything, their legs are all, um, they're all like uh, scratched up and everything where that rooster has gone after, I think all of them, but the dad, you know? Um, so the rooster was getting aggressive toward people and toward the other hens. Now, luckily we have a, we have a huge place for all these animals to roam here. So this, these chickens can roam on about two acres of an area that they probably mess with. <laughs> or at least free range. And hopefully that seems to keep ours from being bored and picking on each other. So we'll see how it works out. Um, and maybe the rooster won't be so bad since there's so many hens um, and there's such a big area. So, cause we got like 21, I think we got 21 chickens. Now we got 22 with him. I'm gonna go ahead and feed the animals, see if I can get them locked in this pasture so that I can mess with the barn. 
Maya, come here. Would you guys scoot around this and you guys can get on all sides. Maya. This is for Maya. Oh, she's excited. Maya, look out. go. All right. Hopefully that will keep them busy long enough that I can lock the other gate. The hay is fairly thick here where the feeder was, so just gonna spread it out. It'll give them more areas to be able to lay down. And you guys need to wait patiently. I've still got a couple more things to do. All right, I need to go ahead and swap out the pallet forks so that I can grab the next thing. Look out, Ellie. Look out. You guys can go back in. Ellie. Yeah. The camera's the thing you want to mess with. So that was two protein tubs. I spread them out that way they could do exactly what they just did. So the heifers can have one that they share. And then the sheep can have another one over here that they can eat out of. And then, because the, the heifers will kind of bully them out of the way of the hay and the feed, and separating it kind of helps them be able to share a little bit better. So I've been needing to do this for a while, and finally picked up a couple of these tubs the other day. These things are extremely heavy. They're like 200 pounds a piece. You just can't like pick them up and go put them in your truck. You normally gotta go and like buy them and then the place has to load them in your vehicle with a fork truck. So in the wintertime when the animals are strictly 
on hay, which is normally like a lower feed quality than if they were grazing green grass. Um, a protein tub, it's pretty normal to feed that in the wintertime or you have those out in the wintertime just to give them a little bit extra nutrition. And like I said, I should have done this like a couple of months ago. So these protein tubs have like a molasses added to them to give them some sweetness. And it, this is actually soft enough you can tell they've, they've kind of bit into it and they can take out chunks. And when it gets wet, it gets softer, it's easier to eat. Thing about sheep, man, they are skittish animals. Don't take much to get them to just run away from you. It's hard to get any video of them doing anything because they just get scared all the time. I almost forgot to put this back on there. So, I also got some Redmond sheep mineral. I don't know if I've ever seen mineral specifically designed for sheep before but this has added vitamins a d and e and i think that'll be good for the ewes since they're pregnant and it's winter time and they're on hay i think this is something to try out we've been just been running uh, the redmond garlic salt which is safe for sheep as well but we got to be real careful about what type of feed and what type of minerals we use because they are shared by both um, dairy cows, beef cows, and sheep. So we got to make sure whatever we use is, is, is safe for all of them. And with sheep, it's usually the copper content. You got to have really low copper in all of your feed and minerals. And this one, this one only has 3 ppm of copper. It's like really low. And our first customer may be... Ellie, you want some sheep mineral? Now here comes Maya. She can't let anybody have something she hadn't tried. Maya, stop. Stop it. She's trying to pull the gloves out of my back pocket. Stop it. St what, you got one. Stop it. No. Man, she is a handful. Stop it. Stop it. You gotta be good. Yo, I just stepped in mud. Thanks a lot, Maya. All right, the animals are all set up now. I just have to come back of an evening, make sure the water's filled up and lock them back in the barn tonight because of the coyotes. So another thing I need to try to get done today is I need to make up some more kindling. I never have enough kindling. We've only got about maybe six pieces left. So I need to go ahead and make some up so there's plenty while I'm gone. Let's go ahead and get started. So at the beginning of winter, we had three stacks of, or three rows of firewood here. We've got one full row left. There's just a little bit left here. We're about two thirds of the way through of what I thought we would burn this winter. So um, looking fairly good on what I estimated. And here at the end, you got these crisscrossed to hold up the, the, the stack. And these are nice, you know, it's kind of square, straight pieces. They're mostly straight grained. So these will probably turn into kindling fairly easily, at least with the log splitter.
Hey, duck ducks. So this duck here is the last one to come up and eat. He's being separated from the rest of the ducks for some reason. He just kind of sits by himself and he moves very slowly. In fact, see, he kind of lets me get close to him. You see, I just kind of, I don't know if he's just too fat or what, but he don't move very fast. And that's a Peking duck. They're pretty fat ducks the way they are. And uh, he's definitely the least mobile of all of them. We're afraid that something's eventually gonna end up getting him. Well, while we're out here, let's maybe do a little update on the pond. So just looking at it right now, it looks amazing. So it did get cold enough to freeze the pond this year. And that really, I think, will help with the duckweed. Last year it didn't freeze and the duckweed stayed alive along the edges. And as we walk along here, I don't see any duckweed along the edge. Everything looks perfectly clean. Now I'd probably have to go and check some of the inlets and stuff like that and see if we can find any. But just the way it looks right now, the water's clear. I don't see any duckweed, algae, nothing like that um, on the surface. All right. Well, I don't know if you can see that right there. There is a little bit of duckweed right here in this little pocket right there. So there is still a little bit left in the pond but nowhere near what we had at the end of winter last year so of course this year we do have the carp um, we put the grass carp in here and hopefully I, we're pretty sure that um, we've seen some of them still alive so hopefully they will end up eating that and keeping up with it that's what they told us we'll find out but they said as long as they are in at the beginning of the season, they should keep it under control. Adding it like we did in the like summertime or fall when the whole pond was covered, of course there's way too much for them to eat. But overall, the pond looks amazing right now. So um, I really do have high hopes for this year. I think it will turn out better than last year. I don't think it could have got much worse than what we had the last couple years. So I think I got everything done that I wanted to today. I'm just trying to make everything easier for Rebecca so there's less chores to do. So um, so now she should only have to do, like of an evening, she'll have to fill the water troughs, get the eggs, feed the cats, feed the dogs, lock up the animals, and in the morning she'll have to let the animals back out. So hopefully I think that's everything she'll have to do. Um, hopefully everything goes smooth, you know, over the couple days that I'm gone. But I do have the small tractor set up too with the bucket on there. And she will use that to, you know, carry some of the heavier things around for her so she don't have to lift stuff. So she can use the small tractor if she needs to. But uh, yeah, hopefully everything will go fairly smooth. And um, I'm going down to the farm show just to be able to meet viewers. I mean, that's the main reason. We don't give out, we don't let people just come here uh, to our property we we don't tell people our address we kind of keep that secret and um so this is an opportunity to be able to go to farm show and be able to meet viewers and have conversations get to meet people so um it's just kind of a good place to be able to do that plus there's a lot of other stuff you can see while you're there so anyway that's that's the only reason i'm i'm really doing it um and hopefully i'll get to see some of you guys there by the time this posts it'll probably uh, the meet and greet will probably already be over. I do plan on being there Saturday morning, um, part of the morning, uh, before I leave and come back home. So I might be able to run into people, you know, Thursday, Friday, or Saturday, if possible. Well, guys, I think that's going to be it for this video. I still have laundry to finish, trying to help out with that too, and uh, get my bags packed and just kind of get everything ready. And uh, going to try to have supper and all the chores done before Rebecca comes home tonight. So um, I took today off just so I could kind of get everything ready before I leave. So um, hopefully uh, when Rebecca comes home, she won't have nothing to do tonight and it'll all be done for her too. But anyway, that's it for today's video, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.